Hello there, welcome back to Why in the Morning. If it's Tuesday, you know how we do. It's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Lashira is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks at the children fashion industry. And in studio, I am joined by Irene Adiambo, and she is the founder of Timeless Kids Wear. Thank you very much, Irene, for creating time to be with us today. Thanks for having me. You look fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so they say that uh, one of the best ways to make a child happy is just be good to them, make them feel good, and one of the ways is actually dress them well. Yes, and it also helps build their confidence from an early age. All right. Yes. I think your background is in uh, account. You're an accountant by profession. Exactly. And then here you are, dive into entrepreneurship. So how did that happen? First, starting out right after clearing university, jobs were a bit hard to come by. I got to work in a few places, but not didn't get an opportunity to, to practice accounting. And in 2014, I had my daughter. Unfortunately or fortunately, I lost my job then when going for the maternity leave. So I went back home, started doing part-time jobs, mainly online jobs, online writing. And then I also did casual jobs like cooking chapatis to get a little income to feed the baby because Unfortunately, the dad had abandoned us, okay. so I was the one to take care of the baby. And people used to notice how I dressed my daughter. So I would always get compliments. Someone asked, where did you buy this? Then I saw that as an opportunity. Why not start it as a business to make income and be able to provide for myself and the baby? Mm. So that's how Timeless Kids Fair was born. Fantastic. Yes. So, uh, how did you, how were you able to raise capital? Because at this particular time, um, you have guys, friends who are asking you, uh, where can I get an outfit like how you're dressing your child? So how did you raise the capital? I would like to say I'm fortunate to have a very supportive family. My parents came through after we were abandoned. So my parents took me in and my dad sponsored part of my, when, when I was going to start out afresh, he sponsored part of the cash I used. He gave me some rent money and I took part of that rent money, 2K, 2000. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, I deal in second hand kids outfits. So with second hand, you don't have to have a lot of cash to start. Right. Yeah, so I just did 2000, went to the market, bought a few outfits and that's how I started off. All right, so what is your value proposition when you look at the, the, the space that you're into? Sorry? Your value proposition, what is your niche in this market space? Mostly, I would say my, w my best part of it is the newborns, mm -hmm. mainly, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thrive so much in the newborn sector. Okay. Though we also sell for other ages, like th up to 13 years. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even upon request, we will do to 15 years, but mostly we thrive in newborn outfits. Okay, yes. and uh, when guys head on to your online space, which is Timeless mm -hmm. uh, Kids, uh, right? Across all social media handles? Yes, on Instagram right. and Facebook. Okay, so how do you guys, where do you outsource your uh, your outfits from? We get our outfits from Korogosho Market and from Gikomba Market. No, oh, right. but yes. they're good quality at the end exactly. of the day. Exactly, good quality, yes. All right. and how about the prices? Our prices are quite affordable. Our lowest is 50 shillings. Mm -hmm. and the highest is 900 mm -hmm. for the outfits and I also deal in kids shoes so for kids shoes the maximum price is 1500 okay. yes so for how long have you guys been running the business we started in 2016 June so by June this year we'll be turning five okay for yes. someone who's watching this and they're interested into getting in this uh, space of kind of a business mm -hmm. What will be your couple of tips on how to go about getting to the thrift, the thrift market space? Yeah. First tip is you'd rather start small. The best advice I would give someone is start small. Because when starting out, you're not so sure what your clients want. Mm -hmm. You are new in this, so you're not so sure what your clients want. You could just buy a few outfits, figure out which one moves faster. Then on, maybe when restocking the next time, you now you do it in bulk. And the other thing I would also say is 
push to stop the mentality of let me try and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Once you want to start, just give it your all. Do it fully, not doing it to try and see how it goes. Yeah. You're doing this full time? Yeah, that's my full time job. All right. For yes. someone who's watching this and they're wondering, when it comes to, you know, w the, the place where you outsource it, do you go and just uh, like uh, pick specific uh, things for yourself or do they come as a bug? For me, I've, be, I've always been picking specific, yeah, that works for me for the online market, yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And what are the most uh, important uh, considerations when it comes to children's clothing? Number one is the kind of fabric. Children, mostly cotton is the most favorable fabric for children, especially babies. Mm -hmm. Cotton is the, the best. Mm -hmm. All right. And, Have you... Sorry, and also to okay. add colors. The ah. brighter the colors, the better. Oh yes, that's so true. And yes. I've actually seen that for my a couple of my nieces. And like when you put a, put on uh, when they put on brighter colors, if they are so jovial. And exactly. Yeah, I, mm. think, I don't know. Does it like it, it excites me? them? It excites <laughs> them. Yeah, the colors excite them. All right. Your background is in uh, accounts, right? And uh, I would like to find out from uh, that particular point of view, when is the right time to seek out a loan when it comes to just injecting into the business? Because most people uh, don't really understand when is the right time to put in, to go for, for a loan actually. And uh, yeah, probably can uh, tell us more about that. If one must go for a loan for the business, I would advise go for a loan to boost the business, not going for a loan to start the business. Because you see with boosting, you already know how to go about it. Once you're going for that loan, you know where you're going to put it into use, where exactly. But for someone who's starting, it's a whole, you might be shocked. You might think maybe I'll, I'll take this loan and be able to clear by six months, but maybe probably by six months, mm -hmm. you shall not even have break even, broken even. So you might not be in a position to repay the loan in good time. The interest will accrue will end up in even more and more debts and you'll be unable to clear to pay for the loan and you might also be unable to continue funding your business. All right. Yes. Uh, allow me to take you back. When starting the business mm -hmm. back uh, five years ago? Almost, almost five almost years. Almost five years yes. ago. What are a couple of mistakes that you did in this particular space? Because I'm sure even though you have a background in, uh, in, your, in accounts, this is a new space you're getting into. Mm -hmm. And I'll just... Find out, I would like to find out a couple of uh, uh, mistakes that you, the pitfalls the, the, that you go into for the, uh, for the sake of the, our viewers who want to get into the same there space. There was a time I overstocked. You see, you go to the market, everything is just too cute. Mm -hmm. You overstock. Uh, you over overstocking not considering what the clients want, not what you want or rather not what you like. Mm -hmm. That was one of, the, one of the mistakes I made when starting out. I would overstock. But nowadays... I introduce packages. With packages, a client orders and they give me the specific order of the outfits they want. Okay. So it's easier when I go to the market, I know once I pick this pair of jeans, I'll take it to Michelle. This other dress, I'll take it to so and so. So chances of, stock, of overstocking are quite minimal. So it helps you move the stock quite fast and gives you, there's no room for lots of dead stock. Mm -hmm. So it also saves you cash. All right. Uh, a lot of businesses have uh, actually had to go back to the drawing board, uh, just re-strategize the whole thing, especially due to COVID-19. How, uh, how was 2020 for you as a company? 2020, we were also affected because if you can recall, there's a, at some point, there was a ban on importation of second-hand outfits. So it also affected us badly because on the other end, it led to the rise in the cost of the bills. So even outfits, we had to increase the, the prices. And we got affected since some of our clients had lost their jobs. So with the increased prices, the sales were a bit... High? Low. Low. Oh, yeah, because yeah. oh, clients, yeah. I, I clients lost it. their jobs. And now here is a case where by the outfits, the bills are, they have increased in prices, a difference of even 10,000 Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you have to increase the price too, so as to make some profit. So that you can cover But we all. thank God that things are slowly looking good right now. All right. Yes. And what does it take to actually build uh, a cloth, uh, a ch children clothing sort of kind of a brand? What does it take? I would say number one, honesty. Especially for someone dealing in online. I'm talking mainly because of I, I'm in online business, yeah. 
honesty and it also takes a lot of sacrifice. Oh yeah. Yes. Because yeah. if you don't deliver, when you say you'll deliver credibility, that's the issue. That's an yes. Issue. A client gives an order from Malindi, maybe you don't deliver, or here is a case whereby they're specific about the fabric because of the weather in that place. They want pure cotton material, and then you don't, you're not open with them on the type of fabric. You see, once they get the outfit, chances of them coming back for more are quite low because you are not honest enough. So I've done my best to be as transparent as possible i just tell the cl client outright that this is cotton or this is not pure cotton so it's upon the client to decide and also you sacrifice because at the market you spend hours since i don't buy bills i select mm -hmm. at the mar at the market you spend hours selecting the best outfits preparing for the packages also you have to give it your best shot because for a newborn for instance for a newborn package Newborns are sensitive, so the mom wants the best for the baby. Oh, very yeah. true. Yeah, so you must get something that's as, that is as good as new. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's actually from that you, you get referrals. Exactly. You know, good quality, mm -hmm. good service. Mm -hmm. So speaking about um, uh, referrals and everything, what mm -hmm. is your marketing strategy when it comes to this particular, uh, your business as that is? Number one, I use kid models. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, when someone sees an outfit on a kid, one of my outfits on a kid, before they even buy, they have an idea of how cute the outfits are. And number two, I decided to offer convenience by doing the packages. Mm -hmm. So with the packages, once you order, you get everything all at once. You don't have to keep coming back and checking, okay, this time I buy jeans, next time I buy this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, a couple of financial lessons that you've learned uh, along the way. Number one, I've learned you you count the cash once you have it. <laughs> With online, you only count it as sale. Uh, sale has been made once you have the cash at our hand. Because there are also as much as people complain of corn buyers, mm -hmm. corn sellers, mm -hmm. there are also corn buyers out there. And number two, I've learned that it's good to save the little you make. Oh, yes, sure. for the rainy days. Because like a case where we had corona, that time when there were no bills completely mm -hmm. yeah savings could savings came through yeah and speaking about uh con con you call them con buyers yeah they are con, you know people have been saying oh online sellers are scammers yeah, or they're legit. Con, yeah. We are of which the it's true there are some yeah, who do some that. that so how do you deal with how do you curb the situation whereby when you're doing deliveries mm -hmm. so how do you curb that because you, you guys deliver a uh, countrywide so yes. how do you curb to the to the point whereby you ensure mm -hmm. this is a legit client. Since we are based in Nairobi, for any client outside Nairobi, you have to send cash full amount first plus for the parcel fee before we send out your outfit. Mm -hmm. And for a client in Nairobi, you pay cash on delivery. And if you want to reserve an outfit, you also pay in full to reserve an outfit. All right. Yes. Then trust is a real big thing here exactly. yeah yeah totally. it's a really big because if you're not careful you might end up you lose the cash and you also lose the clothes so it's a double loss okay yes so how big is the children's uh, clothing market i would say quite quite big in fact like my case i'm not able i've been there for four years plus but mm -hmm. i'm not able to cover everything or rather cover everyone mm -hmm. yes because number one the kids outgrow their outfits quite fast that's very true. Yes. They grow quite very fast, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's look at a couple of uh, challenges that you're facing in the business. The challenges, number one, is getting a first-time cli first client. Though nowadays, at least that one is, uh, it, it gets better with time. The more you are in the industry, the more mm -hmm. people find you to be legit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Getting someone to trust you for the first time, someone to send you cash for an outfit they've not seen. Yeah. And how do you build the, the aspect of credibility in your clients? Cool. For me, I tell you outright the, the fittings and everything, and then I also let you know about the fabric, the color. You know, at times the camera can distort the color of the outfit, so a client might not be sure. And I also allow room for exchange. Just in case we deliver an outfit, it doesn't fit your baby. As long as you inform us within 24 hours and it's not washed, we allow room for exchange. So that one also makes the, the client comfortable to come back for more. Mm 
because mm. they know in case of anything or in case they don't find the, the outfit appealing to them as as far as maybe the prince they can always return even for those outside nairobi okay yes fair enough fair enough mm. so let's look at uh, the future what is the vision like uh down i don't want to give you a time frame mm -hmm. what's the future like looking for the you know timeless uh, kids uh, in future i would like to have like kids store rather kids supermarket that mainly stocks the thrifted outfits mm -hmm. in the major towns because at times online we've, we've experienced we've had a good time or rather we've had we've had some lessons along the way we've had we created lots of customers we've had lots of followers online mm -hmm. but also we love to have a physical shop or rather a ma major physical ma in major towns whereby someone can just walk in at any time mm -hmm. buy the outfit immediately and go with it home immediately so we're looking at opening stores and i feel like that is so much possible yes and but still continue doing it online mm. yes for yeah. those who can't make it to the store that's so true. I, I believe it's actually it can be done yes it can be done yes. so what would be your advice for people who are keen into getting into business number one patience business you, you don't open a business today and become a millionaire by tomorrow evening <laughs> patience is key because you find different types of clients so you have to deal with them mm -hmm. you have to find a way to deal with them to tolerate some of them patience is all you need and number two also consistency because consistency i would say is what has mainly kept me in business i, I keep updating my stock or rather i keep i've always been rest restocking posting new outfits every week so with consistency at least it builds the confidence of the clients that you are there in business to stay not someone will see you online today and then after two weeks you've disappeared again yeah so consistency patience and working smart and most importantly god prayers yeah, yeah. as we always say yes. true. so do you work alone or do you have a team i have a team mm -hmm. yes I, how have, many? I have a team of three mm -hmm. one of them is my dad mm -hmm. and then yes. two support are, all the way yes he helps with the deliveries uh -huh. and then two uh uh, to the two riders who help with the deliveries uh, yes nice so for someone who's watching us and uh, uh, they've been following up with this conversation and they would like to be part in this business they might just want to ask a few questions mm -hmm. uh, to you Irene so how can they find you across all the social media handles even potential clients that yes is. on Facebook we are timeless kids mm -hmm. on Instagram it's at timeless kids mm -hmm. there you'll find all our contacts and I'll be ready to answer oh, Thank you very yes. much for creating time yes. to be with us. And speaking about, you know, the children's fashion industry and what, what is what it what it's all about, mm -hmm. and uh, the market gap that is there for young people to actually get into. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me too, and looking forward to many more. Absolutely, I'm yes. looking forward to that supermarket though. Yes. <laughs> so that is Irene Adiambo. She is the founder of Timeless Kids, where we were talking about uh, the children fashion industry and the market gap that is there that you can, you uh, as a young person, can tap into and make good money in it. So at Y254 Channels, you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Shira. Is where you can find me across all my socials. So make sure you don't touch that. Dal will be right back with so much more on Why in the Morning. <laughs>